Hey, this is Josh Lobo with KurtPellegrini.com. Hey, Kurt, how are you? Excellent. Perfect. All right. Um, how has your life changed since uh, you've been in the UFC? Uh, amazingly, is that a word? Amazingly, excellent, great. You know, I mean, UFC is uh, it's my employer. You know, they I, I work for the UFC. I wake up every morning. I, you know, a lot of fighters out there, you know, that fight for different organizations. You don't know if they're going to be around today or if they're going to fight tomorrow. You know what I mean? So UFC, they're not going nowhere. So it's it's really good to to know that you you know you fight for a company. So you know it's it's changed my life. You know, I have a house, family, you know, everything because of that. So thanks to the UFC. Great. Uh, I know that there have been a lot of great parts about being a fighter, um, as you mentioned. But uh, are there any downsides to the fighter lifestyle? You know what? The only part I really hate, to be honest with you. I don't. I don't even mind the week of cutting weight when you're at the fight. Uh, I really hate being away from my my wife and my daughter. That's the, kind of the hardest thing, you know. And I'm in the house with them every day, but I'm I'm not. You know, I I don't change her diapers or I'm not that loving father that I should be to my to my daughter or to my wife because I try to just embrace the violence as much as possible. And you know, if I'm a if I'm a civilized person, you know, washing dishes, cleaning up after my, if I do that, I, I don't even think I should be fighting. I can't do that. Every time I've lost, I was so civilized where I would, you know, I'd be a great dad. I'd be a great husband to my wife. And and now I, I really try to let go of that part and be a fighter. That's what the UFC pays me to do. And when I get in a contract and I sign that, I. I let go of my family as much as possible. If that's the worst part, you know, I'm looking forward to this fight to be over so I can just be a great dad and a great husband again. So, interesting. I love my wife. She's right there. I love her. <laughs> well, I hate you right now, my kid. <laughs> um, so, uh, for the internet fans, do you ever read uh, the, fight, the fight breakdowns or the analysis? Nothing like that. Never do. Honest to God, I. My my wife is the UFC super fan, and she reads it and will only tell me like if someone on the computer said Kurt sucked and Rob's gonna knock his teeth down his throat, she won't read that to me. She'll read the part like, oh my God, Kurt, everyone here thinks you're gonna kill him. You're so great. You're just so ready. You're so ready, and that's everyone saying that. I'm like, oh wow, shit. But this one guy, he said that he wasn't sure if he's gonna pick it, but he's probably going to. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I always got my super fan to let me know. If anything bad's happened, I'll know, but I try to stay away. Reading part's so overrated anyway. <laughs> All right. So with UFC 100 coming up, um, what fights do you think you want to see? Let's say you were Joe Silva for a day. What would you set up? I would set up Kurt Pellegrino on the main card, main event, headliner, <sighs> against... I don't know. Anyone? No. Uh, UFC 100. Man, I, I don't know. I, I mean, everyone that has a belt, put them on there and everyone defend their belt against the number one contender. Five fights, five title defenses. I guess, right? That'd be amazing. Yeah, I hope Joe Or so get, like, is. all the UFC champions to fight all the other guys out there that, like, think they're the best and put the, that aren't in the UFC, but like say like a Fedor, and put him against Brock, you know, at heavyweight, and like pull some other guys in that thing that like Sakuraba, or you think you're the greatest, come on over here and fight this guy for that one fight, you know, and make it like, wow. Because every time they put like a pride champion in the UFC, where our guys always beat him, so that, that'd be pretty cool. You know what I mean, UFC 100. I like cool. to watch it on TV. Pay-per-view, I'm sure. Um, all right, when you're in a fight, I know obviously you're thinking about the fight, um, but have you thought about something else not related directly to the fight? As I was fighting uh -huh. someone? You know, it's funny you say that. Ever since I, I found myself again with fighting when I moved home to New Jersey and went back to the old style of training and 
having a lot of good core people really care about me and winning and that's all I want that's all I ever wanted you know I was raised to win that was it I wasn't raised to be a good person I was raised to be a, a winner and it really was and I mean I love my life I love how I was raised and when I came back to New Jersey and found Kenny Florian and Kevin Kearns and Sit Yard Tong and the PAL um, Boxing Club and Passaic, all those professional boxers and Olympians in there. You know, when I found that, I was like, man, I'm home. You know, and when I went and fought Tiago, all I remember is in the third round, I, when I'm, Tiago took me down, I was like, shit, my dad's gonna be mad at me not taking down. And then when I was in his guard, I was like, oh yeah, Miguel used to hit me when I was on top of him punching him. And I can remember myself saying those things. So I was punching him in the face and laughing like Miguel's gonna be proud. Because I'm punching this kid in the face. And in the third round when he took me down, honestly, I said to myself, I can't let him finish this takedown. I have to roll. I promised my daughter before I went on that airplane to go to that fight. I promised my daughter in front of my wife. I didn't even let her know. I'm sure Priscilla didn't even know what I said to her. But I said, I'm not going to lose. I promise you, I will not lose. And I vividly remember myself saying that as I got thrown and I got back up to my feet. Then he had my leg. And I'm living in my wife's parents' house with my daughter. It was, we were cramped. I wanted out. And I was against the cage. I go, I got to get off the cage. I want to buy a house. We gotta, I got to buy a house. I got to provide for my family right now. I cannot. I got to get out of this. And I got out. And I, th I thank Kevin Kearns for those condition and workouts. And I thank Kenny Florian for not giving a shit if, if I won or I lost. He wanted me to, he wanted to see the best Kurt. And I, it happened, it worked. And every other fight I'm thinking about how much time's left. Oh my God, or I'm looking at the time, or I'm hearing the crowd. I, all I was doing was thinking about everything I've done. And I was in the best shape of my life. Tiago Tavares was the best shape of my life, and I believe this is the best shape now I'm in. So. All right. Um, so, recently a movie came out, uh, the movie 300. Do you see it? Yeah, many times, actually. <laughs> awesome. So, um, which three fighters would you want to make a 300-style uh, standoff with? Like, if they were, if they, if you had to be in that movie, who do you, or in the real situation like that, who do you, who would you want with you? And that, um, Leonidas, just because how awesome he is. Um, the guy with the one eye, that got his eye stabbed. Out, do you remember? I don't know his name. I have no idea. That's the guy, though. <laughs> and then the captain, when his son got killed, because he was definitely insane. I think I fit in perfect with those guys. <laughs> the insane guys, great. Yeah, the crazier the better. Because when it's time to go to battle, man, I don't want, I don't want kids.